it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com So in today's video I'm going to look at something which I class as a dangerous cassette A bad boy even A bit like old Memorexes You see old Memorexes are known for being a bit temperamental Losing pads, shedding and not usable now They only got good when they got outsourced And another company that in my head at least is like that too is Scotch. Now Scotch, you know, from 3M, the Minnesota, what is it? 3M Minnesota Mineral and Mining Company, I think it is. I'm sure you'll correct correct me, but Scotch, you know, Scotch tape is, is sticky tape, adhesive tape, um, but then Scotch cassette tape as well. But they were pioneers. I mean, the first metal tape was Scotch, but when I look at the 70 Scotches that I've got, um, they haven't aged well and usually think deterioration etc when it comes to these cassettes so I got these because you know people like old 70s cassettes especially sealed ones even the type zeros and I struggle to keep in stock because they're very collectible and they're very endearing even though they're not much for recording on it's all about the aesthetics and nostalgia so I got these high energies and they come in packs of fives and just like the camera refocus the colour because uh, when it's on red for a while it goes funny but there we go look at this how 70s could this be I mean this is from 1975 this cassette you know it's got taupe and gold and beige and it just it couldn't look more 70s if it had a handlebar moustache and was driving a Jensen interceptor but there we go high energy made in Italy so this isn't an American made scotch this is an Italian made scotch so I've got one which I've already opened so initial expectations were low this is going to be a shedy tape that's um, going to look pretty poor and you know but it's for collectors so you warmed it up and then I looked at the J card and this bit's hidden because you know they didn't do all cliche cases in then times but I was reading and I went Oh, this is good, and we're going to have a read of it. Look, care before using your cassette for the first time, avoid any slack or tape scatter by running it through once in the forward mode. That's common parlance now for tape heads. When we get new tapes, we do a fast forward and rewind. You know, help it spool properly. See if there's any stickiness there before putting it in there and making our decks suffer because the tape stuck together and just generally loosening it up after decades of being stored. But this is the first time, like I say, 1975, that I've actually seen this written somewhere that you should do that. Because try to avoid running the cassette backwards and forwards unnecessarily. Yep. Use the stop button on your deck whenever selecting another mode, i.e., don't go from fast forward to instant play. Fair enough. Always wind the cassette to the end before replacing it in its case. Again, this is something everyone recommends now. Wind it all the way around, and I do believe that's the case, and it's the best thing to do. Don't leave your cassette near speakers or strong magnetism. Yep. Try to keep it away from heat. Use looks to prevent erosion. I thought, that's really good, that. I like that. Nice tips that have, like I say, almost become biblical. It's what we do as tape heads. This is how we care for our cassettes, and I like that. And then the inside of the J card, yep, the high MGC 90, blah, blah, blah. And then, again, for a 70s cassette, it gives us some facts. And they're all, you know, DBs above IEC and blah, blah, blah. But at least it goes there. You hear more music, less background hiss, better low frequency distortion, gives better reproduction of instruments like bass drums, and gives us this nice little chart. In a, oh, a Nakamichi 700, they weren't messing around, were they? Frequency response versus the DIN. You know, sound test you can see. I can't recall an earlier cassette which had this sort of stuff on, but I'm sure there are. But they're also about high frequencies, and that's it. Symbols, bass and symbols. That's what I think about when I'm comparing tapes to see how good the performance is. Can I hear the bass nice and strong? Can I still hear the symbols? And it says it's a very sensitive tape, picks up sounds that other tapes miss. And you can record at higher levels with high energy. So, a really nice informative J card. Then we'll look at the cassette itself. Well, it's a 70s cassette. They weren't really doing clear shells except for the, you know, type zero type clear shells. But it's, it's not rattly. 
That isn't rattling. Could that be because it's an old scotch and it's all stuck together? No, I fast forwarded and rewinded this and it was smooth enough. The tape itself though, if we can focus on it, is a very deep brown. Look at that. That is a proper deep brown and it's very shiny and well calendared. Which I was quite surprised because it's either usually sandpaper or it's, it's, it's you know, the D. Especially the D from, say, 79. is nowhere near this brown. So high energy, could this be a very fine particle ferric? And I'm thinking, could this be one of the first super ferrics? It's saying about the bass and the treble. It's saying about it can record it hotter. Hmm. Or is it just going to be a 70s scotch like Highlanders and stuff, which I've got, which a dropout city and stick? Who knows? We'll just pop that in there. Now, when I look at the box, did the eagle eye of you spot this? A free cassette recording guide. And here it is, a cassette recording guide. And I'm going to go into this because I looked on the internet for a PDF of this. And I couldn't find one. So I'm going to have to PDF this because this is... Forget Pizza Hut vouchers or keyring or a pair of crap headphones. This is the best freebie I've ever seen in a pack of cassettes. And this again is from 1975. And I wish I'd had this when I was younger. And we're going to go through it. So, the introduction. It's intended to help you make the best use of your cassette recorder by telling you a little about the recording process, the cassettes themselves and cassette recorders in a non-technical way. So it talks about, you know, look at the chapters. What is sound product reproduction? The types of cassettes. What are bias and equalization? Something that as time goes on, so many people watch my video, which I did about this. Bing, I think it's back on YouTube now, you can relink. And said, oh, I never knew, oh, it makes such a difference. And I didn't know at the time. But here is in 1975 in a little freebie booklet. What are bias and equalization? Noise reduction systems. Cassette recorder controls, making your own recordings, how scotch cassettes are made, care and handling do's and don'ts, basic cassette troubleshooting and glossaries. So it goes on about Thomas Edison succeeding to converting the air vibration directly into a wiggly groove on a wax cylinder. And then it goes on about that and then it shows you sort of in the diagram, how the tape, you know, you've got the base, the guide, the tape itself, the coils, which is the recording head, how, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go through this because it's that forever, but then you've got the different types of cassette de tape, sorry, so you've got the commonest, which is a ferric, like Scotch Diner range, which are ones which I have not found too great performance with because of their edge, and then you've got like the chromium dioxide, CRO2, and then it shows them, you know, we've got this one, the high energy, energy super ferric. And then we've got the, you know, like I say, it is saying the super ferric. It's right there, is it? but is it true? You've got the master cassettes, you know, we've got the normal, the chrome, type 3 ferrochrome. And then it goes on about what bias and equalization are. And basically, um, was, there was one that was really, yeah, there we go. Bias pitch is not discernible to the human ear. And it talks about the bias and that low noise tapes need more bias than standard cassettes. Otherwise the sound from them will be too bright. You know what I mean? And then you add bias to reduce treble and take it away to increase it type thing. And then it goes on about this. And like I say, I can't go through all this because it will take forever, but it talks about it it talks about eqing you know the equalization during recording the high travel frequencies are boosted in a controlled fashion they are then cut down slightly differently on replay the net result is that various losses are compensated for in addition noise and distortion are reduced boosting the treble frequencies during recording is called pre-emphasis it goes on about this and saying you know bias and equalization should only be adjusted by a qualified technician but let, we'll skip through the rest. You know, it goes on about, you know, um, the, the reduction systems, DNL from Philips, ANRS from JVC, DBX, Dolby. And it goes through what they're all about, how to make Dolby recordings, what Dolby does, you know, basically the cassette controller recording them, 
how to set the meters on your VUs and of course in them days look at that it's even got a Walkman in a 1975 booklet and the Walkman hadn't come out yet don't push the fast rewind during fast wind making your own recordings how to record from discs off air with microphones wildlife copy it's going on about copyrights how the scotch cassettes are made how they produce the tapes the clinical knack knack do you want me to send you this so you can read it and help you make a decent tape and mm. coating process you know this like i think you've got it here now this is a wonderful wonderful little book if this was like a four size with a hardback i'd recommend everyone bought it this is a great little book and like i say i am going to try and pdf this so everyone everyone could have a read of it because it's a brilliant little book now like i said this came this lovely five pack of cassettes which let's just slide that in there you know stick it on the counter at the shop there you go five cassettes pick one out and you can get a free book as well but there we go so enough going on about that let's see if this all this niceties about the quality of the the copy on it and the quality of the book and everything is let down by the fact this being a sticky dropout fest so um i've got a little bit of a special tune to put on this one so let me cue it up let's have a listen okay we shall use the cr7 today because well i've never met a cassette that it didn't like apart from broken ones or type zero so here is the scotch high energy is this a super ferric i don't know let's try it out i'm going to record this at around plus three and i think for 1970s type one plus three if it can handle it well is good going by anyone's book so let's put it in and let's see if first is first if it can calibrate it so the track i'm going to use on this has an interesting story it's one of my own tracks it's a villa rosso featuring nate J that comes out on the 24th of july which is tomorrow if you're watching this live on all good streaming platforms the story behind this is is lately there's a lot of love for 90s dance you know using tr909 drums and korg m1 piano 16 dance piano and and my friend and i were just um doing some jingles for my radio show and then we were just having a few beers and we said you know what we can do better than this so we haven't done better but what we've created here is a very stereotypical 90s dance homage so to speak by two guys that love this style of music and it's a loving homage and we liked it so much then what the hell We'll release it what's the worst that can happen nobody listens to it like the rest of my music so i'm going to use this because it's got very pronounced high hats it's got very good bass in it and i've made sure there's plenty of mid-range in it so let's see how this oh bloody hell 45 year old cassette 45 year old cassette actually handles tunes that came out today so let's give it a whirl this is villa rosso featuring nate j with Jack and move. Feel the beats, feel the rhyme, move your body, gesture, feel the beats, feel the rhyme, move your body, gesture, feel the beats, feel the rhyme, move your body, gesture, feel the beats, feel the rhyme, move your body, gesture, feel the beats, feel the rh
I like being surprised. I like being floored. This cassette, with all its intricate packaging, useful texts, very grandiose look for the 70s, but more importantly, that performance gets my respect. This is a fantabulous cassette. I've always said that niceties and politeness comes free, but respect is earned. With that performance, this little cassette, and let's say this again, this 45 year old cassette has earned my respect. Not just because of how it looks, because it couldn't look any more 70s if it tried, not because it has a very Detailed J card with lots of good information on it, which nowadays has passed into the nomenclature of the tape head. Not because it's got this amazing cassette recording guide, which if you look at the back, I didn't see, has got all the UK offices, but it could have been sold separately. Look, recommended retail price 35p. For the copy, for the price of a copy of the Beano, you could make much better cassette recordings because of the knowledge this gives. No, this cassette earns my respect for how it sounded. It sounded brilliant. I just listened to the, through the recording again. Couldn't tell any dropouts, couldn't tell any distortion, and it was peaking at plus five. A 45-year-old cassette. The oldest cassette, I think, that I've actually done a video on. All of this together says to me that Scotch really were a great cassette manufacturer and even though they outsourced eventually they outsourced well and they made good products yes i'm sure some of you will say that some of your highlanders and your um, extended range ones the cheapies have deteriorated but how old are they but this one 45 years obviously stored well because it's still got its original box and everything with it performed amazing and there's a sure sign to people to say, oh, t cassettes deteriorate, the rubbish, really? Really? Apart from the hiss, and you only hear hiss when music isn't playing, but if you were to play that to somebody, eyes closed, hear some headphones, listen to this, and it didn't have very quiet bits in, would they A, complain about it being hissy, or B, would they know it was a cassette? 45 years old. I've got USB sticks that haven't lasted 12 months. So there we go, another marvel of cassettes with great accoutrements that I absolutely love. Long live cassettes because by the looks of it, 
they've got a lot of life in them yet. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Happy taping. Bye bye.